All right, now it is the most exciting part, I'm sure. Uh, it's the time where we build it and when we run it and see how it all works together. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, try, try to build it. Um, clean and build. Okay, so we'll start the building process. Mm, okay, so it uh, it failed. Let's see. Let's see why did it fail? Uh, uh, context loads cost. Ah, okay, because of the test. That's a very good point, by the way. Let's let's uh, let's go here. You see, when you create a default application Spring Boot, it creates this default test um, test file. Now. In reality, of course, you write test, you, de you define the contract that you're going to develop, you write the test for this contract, and then you develop, uh, imp implement the contract itself, the object itself. It's called uh, top, uh, top to bottom uh, development, development from top. But the way we did it, it's kind of the bottom, bottom to top uh, development. It's, uh, it's uh, good for prototyping, it's good for fast development, but it's not how in reality you would develop software so you always need to have tests because we kind of saving time if we were gonna if we, if we were going to uh, write tests for every single thing uh, i'm sure most of you would be uh, bored and uh, it will take up to 80 percent uh, more time uh, in order to develop it and i i, te I, te I tell you from uh, from the practice in, in company when you work and you develop tests i mean you could do the in tw uh, it's 28 20 to 80 percent rule uh, it's applied here which means it in 20 percent of the time you can do 80 percent of the work but because of the tests it can take up to 80 percent to write this whole application now since we what we do is um, is a prototyping so POC as, as to speak uh, proof of concept type of design then we uh, then we we are intentionally skipping these tests. So what you can do here is uh, for now just mute it. But be, remember, this is something absolutely outrageous. You always need to have tests. Whatever you do, for instance, our this uh, our object in in reality, it, we it should have been implementing some interface. This interface uh, need, needed to be uh, assigned here, created uh, object, tested thoroughly. Uh, you, you do not you do not do it like code it on implementation you code against the interface not implementation but uh, anyway we skip this uh, kind of professional development uh, uh, approaches with tests and uh, so in some cases uh, interfaces in order to simplify development but uh, keep in mind again I want to uh, stress and underline that this is not the, how you would do it in a professional environment I mean, in a professional environment, you would also develop tests. And in most cases, first you develop tests and then you write implementation. But anyway, keep that in mind. So for now, we will mute it you, or you, can, uh, you could remove this test or uh, you, could, uh, you, could, uh, you could write uh, as an exercise, for instance, if you plan a career in a software development, and most of you probably are. Uh, you can uh, exercise into writing tests for this uh, for this object. How would you test it? And what you do in a test? You test uh, the public methods. So you define the contract that it uh, interface that it implements. That's a public contract. That public contract has some public methods, and all those public methods needs to be tested that they were as expected. But again, uh, for a simplicity's sake. I'm showing up the principle, the application, like the POC design, proof of concept design. We are intentionally skipping this very, very important and crucial part of our professional software development. So this is this is uh, would be the bad, bad practice not to write test. Okay, so having this said, let's uh, let's close it and let's try uh, let's try to build it again with no tests and do something absolutely outrageous that uh, managers and team leads would just crush you <laughs> if you if you attempt in real life okay so java journal let's run it so we build it we run it build lips and our application uh, okay let's see what happens okay so far so good yes tomcat uh, 
uh, container started on port 80 just as we uh, defined it here port 80 uh, what we have we, we have index page added video stream you see video manager is active this is exactly what we did here uh, where is that video is active which means it created it started it and now it's it's listening on this uh, socket okay what we can see here mm, what else well that's uh, that that's uh, that's uh, about uh, logs of this application okay so it it, it is uh, running uh, remember that in configuration you you need to, for the socket to work you need to enable it within in the previous lessons we did it but we did not do it in the lesson that we were developing it so you need to uh, this you need to have it enabled right so we have our handler that needs to be triggered and we have our video stream manager now remember this video stream manager uh, will keep all this should keep all the socket session which means that if we open many uh, many um, windows with the same uh, link we should see a video many many videos uh, simultaneously working from our Raspberry Pi right so let's uh, test that out too let's go to our uh, Raspberry Pi all right so uh, our Raspberry Pi is in uh, IP address 100 this time we we'll log into it. We uh, what we do is SSH into it. Okay. Uh, now uh, this is our old application. Let's remove, let's redeploy it. It's our our Raspberry Pi application that we created. Okay. So now we change. We, we go into this directory, and now we can actually run it. Video streamer. Let's see what happens. Okay, so drone. It has ID one, and video recipient is uh, 102. Uh, 102 is uh, if, as you can see. IP config. 102 is uh, our, our Windows machine where we run our Java application. So that's the uh, IP address here. Okay, great. Our uh, Raspberry Pi is running for drone ID one. Let's now uh, check out here. We receive um, drone ID length that uh, is one byte. Okay, great. So uh, we we could go now actually to some uh, some web page. Okay, let's open the page. And what we need to do in this web page, we need to go to this uh, this address that we defined okay this is the end point where we will have our video so what we do is uh, and also look at uh, pay attention to the logs uh, local host and uh, drone ID is uh, you see the drone ID is one we, we because if we set it to uh, for instance drone ID 2 we should not receive anything right so drone ID has one you see what happened here WebSocket connection got open this session and drone ID 2 has one active WebSocket session, but we don't receive anything. And why we don't receive anything? Because our Raspberry Pi is drone ID 1. So that's uh, nothing new about it. So let's uh, let's try something else. Okay, uh, let's try let's try uh, open the same another one. Okay, drone ID has two WebSocket sessions. You see what happens here. Uh, that uh, that part uh, with adding uh, new sessions is, is great because uh, remember how it was happening the way it was happening here is that we uh, <clears throat> whenever we add something it will add drone ID drone ID has active WebSocket session and how active web uh, the amount of active WebSocket session being uh, the size of this collection so now actually it's really when we created new when we create opened new page new new uh, with the same link we actually created two now we need to test it with when you we close it what happens okay fantastic you see you see what happened WebSocket connection closed session is closed status code one you see which was uh, you see we have a WebSocket session uh, we have WebSocket session with this ID 
and then we have WebSock concession with this ID AF AFC and we close the second one which is AFC and now we'll have only this uh, WebSocket okay great so let's uh, now go and uh, open our uh, real uh, drone ID that we uh, corresponds to our Raspberry Pi which was uh, number one all right okay so there there we are you see drone one has one active WebSocket session open and the the one was also closed because we changed it you see it works absolutely perfectly works fantastic now the last thing that we need to test is to open a uh, few windows and that my friends was gonna be fun okay so we'll have many many windows like this right let's see what happens if we have the second one okay so we have the second one what we have with the third one okay what do we have the fourth one yeah, fantastic let's let's go ahead and create a fifth one we, we're talking about five sessions you see how fantastic this is damn that's amazing it's absolutely amazing you see and here we have five WebSocket sessions and one now uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking loving it man it's so great uh, and now imagine anywhere in the world when anyone opens uh, this um, this web page it will see uh, the video stream that comes from Raspberry Pi uh, and it's it's uh, translated all those uh, frames that come from uh, uh, from uh, Raspberry Pi and they are distributed among all uh, all of the these uh, all these uh, sessions that are open that's why it uh, it works the way it is the way it does uh, and so in this case it's localhost but if we deploy it in a VPS or uh, if we access it from our public IP address it will work absolutely uh, absolutely the same let's see my IP well anyway let's let's my my IP location is uh, god damn it not not that I mean IP address which in my case is this one you promise you're not gonna attack me or anything right so here if we uh, do it like this there you go and that's why it's uh, because I, I made port forwarding on my router so whenever I have a request by the by, way with this topic we did not discuss if you want to have it like this you would go to your uh, local router uh, in this local router you need to go to the port forwarding and uh, you see what I've done here uh, here I have uh, I have mapped port 80 to the internal uh, IP address of my uh, my Windows machine okay so whenever I receive uh, request on port 80 from outside which means on my public IP which is this one it will map it to the internal port 80 and to internal uh, internal IP address and my internal IP address is 102 as you just uh, saw it previously I, I showed you right that's uh, let's do it again IP config and that is my my internal address all right that's why I said it here, and that's the reason why it works uh, the way uh, the way it, we we can see it here. Uh, now, uh, well, okay, so we proved it. It works. It works absolutely uh, lovely. Mm. And you see, we're closing session. They are all being uh, being closed. That's it. Okay, fantastic, guys. We did, we created our video video streaming, and now what is uh, what is left to do is uh, to develop our command center. That we will be receiving commands and uh, passing them to uh, to and from the Raspberry Pi and and the drone. It's going to be quite a long uh, part, but. Uh, essentially it will be it will build upon the foundations that we did I mean m much of the same principles that we used here will be used uh, over there 
except that we will also use uh, some drone uh, drone kit uh, and specific uh, programming for uh, for a drone over Mavlink itself. All right, so that's uh, very exciting stuff. Let's uh, if you if you reach at the, to this point and everything is working, if you manage to do it, congratulations to you. You're doing a great job. And let's uh, let's move. Let's go ahead and uh, finalize our project with a uh, with a proper front end and uh, uh, with the command center controls. Okay. See you in a while.